Uh, turn your Bibles over to the book of Matthew and also in the book of Luke. We'll read the same story in two places. And kind of combine them today in the message again. Over in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 through 13. 8, 5. I want to talk to you about the, the Capernaum man, the centurion, and uh, his, his servant that was sick. I want to preach to you about a Gentile surpassed them all. A Gentile surpassed them all. Verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. That's plain, simple plain. I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only. Speak the word only. Yes. Don't forget that. Yeah. And my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed. Now watch this. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, watch this, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Now we're in the book of Luke, chapter 7. Get in verse eight, uh, one, excuse me, verse one, seven, one. Now, when he had ended all his sayings, that come off the mount, mountain, uh, mount, uh, mount, sermon on the mount. And when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, he was, he, was, he liked that fellow. He was dear unto him. Was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent. Now watch it. First of all, he sent unto Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. Now listen. The Jews thought this Gentile centurion was worthy to be healed. They thought that. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter in under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having unto me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth. To another come and he cometh, and to my servant do this and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Yeah. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Let's pray. Father, come to you in Jesus' name this morning. Bless the reading of the word of God. May we glean from it this morning. May we gather those grapes, the clusters, full of that sweet, sweet juice. God, I pray it help us to glean from these vines today. And may we go home filled with the knowledge of God about this subject. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you. That old centurion, go yeah. out shine them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Before we go any following on your mind, I read two times where Jesus said, I have not found such 
faith in all of Israel. He had not found faith like this man had in all of Israel. His disciples were sitting there when he said it. I said Peter, James, John. They were great men, believers. But they were Jews. Jesus said, I have not seen faith like this man's got in all of Israel. That included Peter, James, and John. Kind of embarrassing, I reckon, sitting there and him saying something like that. That's about me coming in here and all these preachers sitting here and say, Oh, I know a preacher now, I'll preach all you guys. Yeah. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, you see. But Jesus said very plainly two times. He said, I have not found faith like this man's faith in all of Israel. No, you guys ain't got what this guy's got. We need that faith today. Yeah. All the preacher Gentiles surpassed them all. Introduction goes like this over in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 11 12. He said, I, he came unto his own. His own received him not. But to his men as received him, to them gave him the power to the sons of God, even those who believe on his name. Yeah. Jew, Gentile, born free, male, female, whatever color you might be, Jesus loves you and whosoever will may come. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. You go to hell because you wouldn't come. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm going to preach a little bit about that. And uh, number one, the, he was a centurion. That means he was a leader of a band of soldiers. He was a, an army man, a soldier. He made a living being a soldier. He was in, with uh, uh, power and authority. He said, you go, they went. You come, they came. You do, you do. He was the boss in his realm. And Jesus said the very same thing about people. We ought to do what he tells us to do. Go and come and listen and obey his voice. Jesus said, this man here, he's got more faith than the rest of the whole of Israel. I, I, don't forget that now. More than all is, don't think like it. Then he is a Gentile. That means he was not a Jew. See, there was Jews and Greeks, Jews and Gentiles, circumcision and uncircumcision. The circumcision was Jews, there was circumcision was everybody else. So there's only two kinds of people in the world, in the earth, compared when you compare it with Judaism. There's Jews and Gentiles. Right. You and I are Gentiles. Unless we've got a few here, don't know that. But Jews and Gentiles. I'll get that again in a moment. And so God's people here that was in the city, the Jews were considered God's people under the covenant. But Jesus found somebody that was not a Jew that outdone them, yeah. outbelieved them, yeah. and got what he asked for. I just want you to see today. And so we see this man's humility, first of all. The people that lived in Capernaum loved this man. They loved the Gentile. The Jews loved a Gentile. Most times they hated him. Wished to drop dead. I mean, friends of earthquake fall on them, open up and swallow them. But they this they love this man. The Jews love this Gentile. It's a shame they didn't love the greatest Jew that ever walked like they did this Gentile. If they loved Jesus like they did this Gentile, when he called upon them, they'd be a whole lot better off today than them. When Jesus calls, you answer. Don't turn him down. The humility of this man. He recognized the wonder of Christ. He recognized the dignity of Christ. But yet he also recognized his unworthiness. He said, I'm not fit for you to come into my house. Yeah. Remember old John the Baptist, when they came to him, they said, are you the Christ? He said, no, I'm just the one crying in the building. Yeah, right. I baptized water with repentance, but he that comes after me, who's greater than I, whose shoes I'm not fit to untie and carry. He'll baptize the Holy Ghost of the He was before me, preferred for I must decrease, he must increase. Yeah. I ain't, honey, that's hum. That's you good. Yeah. If you and I start exalting Christ and abasing ourselves, he'll lift you up. Yes, you brag on yourself, you're going downhill. Yes, right. You brag on Jesus, he's bringing you up. Yeah. Yeah. This man humbled himself and exalted Jesus and got what he asked for. If you want God to answer your prayer, get humble, yeah. get a contrite spirit, That's get right. a broken heart, right. with tears in your eyes, yeah. get to beg God for that granddaughter, that grandson, that child, and God will yeah. give it to you. Yeah. Pride goes before a fall. The haughty and the high minded, they're brought low. But he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Oh, I wish I could get humble. My soul help me, Jesus. If you'll humble yourself, God will give you what you ask for. Yeah. So if you brag on your good works and all that, you're going downhill. This man was humble. He sent the elders, first of all, of Israel to see Jesus. Then he sent some friends to see Jesus. Then bless God, he went. 
You didn't get that. He sent the elders of the Jews to go see Jesus. Wrong crowd. Then he sent some friends to go see Jesus. That's a better crowd, but still ain't perfect. Then bless God, he went. <laughs> you still didn't get it. If you're waiting for the preacher to spoon feed you into heaven, you'll die of starvation. You need to go yourself. Now did you get it? Took a while. Must have been a little thick up there. Shout out. Uh, his humility. His humility. Hallelujah. Old Zacchaeus one day came to Jesus, crawled up in a tree, looked down at him. The only time Jesus looked up at anybody. Come down, Zacchaeus. I must buy your house today. Went home with him. Zacchaeus got all saved and sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost, didn't give his money away. Showed a difference, didn't he? But watch it. He, Jesus said, I got to go to your house. And then this man said, I'm not worthy you come to my house. That's getting humble, friend. Now you see that. Number two, his faith. He recognized the Lord's independence. He didn't need to be in a church house. He didn't have a touch. He didn't have to have a long arm to reach out there and get him. He said, just speak the word. Amen. That's what Jesus, Jesus, all he had to do is speak the word. We got the word. Read the word. If you're waiting on a miracle or a touch, something like that, just read the book. Amen. He said, all I need is you to speak the word and my servant will be made whole." Just speak the word. You preachers, all you got to do is just speak the word. You don't have to do no miracle worker. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. That's all we got is the Bible. Just speak the word. This old boy got humble and he had faith like he ain't never seen before. He said, just speak the word. You don't have to come into my house. I'm not 50 to come to my house. You don't have to touch him. Just speak the word. Amen. See, this man knew that Jesus had the power to speak and devils had to flee. Yeah. To speak and diseases had to leave. Yes, to speak and angels would attend. Yes. He knew that if this man spoke, devils had to back up and take a back yes, seat. Yeah. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. All preachers have to do is just speak the word. It'll do the job. Yeah. <laughs> Diseases had to flee, devils had to flee, and angels had to come and attend when Jesus spoke. He had wonderful faith. At the time, it came from a Gentile. All these Jews, Sanhedrin, scribes, Pharisees, Sanhedrin, uh, uh, priests, and, so on, and, and, the, and they had the temple. They had everything. It seemed like they had everything going their way, but had no faith. We got a great church here. Fine carpet, nice padded pews and altars and so on. But if we ain't got the faith, nothing will happen. Amen. He had great faith. Wonderful faith. It came from the Gentiles. Jesus took a Gentile and taught them to use the lesson. When they should have been teaching the Gentiles. Instead of hating them like they did. But, you know, watch this. And so, his charity... He cared for his slave. Now what slave owner would care for a slave? A piece of property, something to own, something to work, something to buy, sell, trade. But this man loved his servant. And why Donnie did that? But he loved his neighbor. The Jews that lived next door to him said, this man's worthy of this miracle. They came to Jesus. They came said, said this, this man's worthy of a miracle. Y'all do what he's asking. Y'all do what he's asking. I just read it to you. They said, this man's worthy to get what he wants. They, the Jews told Jesus to give this Gentile what he wants. <laughs> that backwards, ain't it? Yeah. That's backwards. Hallelujah. I'm glad Jesus knows what he's doing, don't you? And so it said, very, he is worthy that thou shouldest do this for him. That's what the Jews said to Jesus about this Gentile. He's worthy that you ought to do this for him. Many times I've prayed. I, I'm, I'm Kind of selfish in my prayers. I know God loves everybody. He's saving black folks in Africa, and I'm wonderful. I'm wonder, I'm wonderfully thrilled about it. But I want my children saved. I want my grandchildren. I want my neighbors saved. I want your neighbors saved. I want us to go to heaven together. See, he don't love you no more than he does that guy down yonder in Aboriginal. 
Whosoever will may come. But I'm praised. I want you to go. Yes, You're my friend, my brother, my loved one. I, I want you to go. If I, if I didn't care about you, I'd become a missionary over yonder somewhere and care about them. Yeah. But I want you to go. Yes, but I love you. Amen. God help us. This man, he loved his servant. He loved the Jews. He loved the Bible said he loved his, the Jews. The Jewish nation. He loved the Jewish people. He loved them. He built them a temple to worship in out of his own pocket. Read your Bible to Red Sea. Yeah. Yeah. At his own expense. He built them a temple to worship him. And they loved him for it. They followed him for it. And when it came time for him to pray, they said, Lord, he, he ought to get what he's asking. He, you ought to give it to him. Many times I prayed and I said, Lord, my wife's precious. One of the best Christians I know. The sweetest thing ever lived. Pretty too. And I love her with all my heart. And ain't many people I can say this about, but I said, Lord, she deserves it. Yeah. And some of y'all, I pray the same prayer. Yeah. Lord, if there's anybody on planet Earth that deserves it, she does, yeah. or he does, or yeah. they do. These Jews said to Jesus, this man deserves what he wants. Yeah. Have you ever lived in such a way that somebody say, Lord... He deserves what he wants. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Won't you please give it to him? Yes, Preach it, brother. Most times he, most times, we say, Lord, he ain't worth 15 cents, but would you be good to him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. And Lord, he all been hell his back broke, but would you please be good to him? But this man, they said, he deserves what he wants. Would you give it to him? Jesus knew the Gentile centurion to teach you Jews how to live. Do your neighbors speak well about you? Are your neighbors praying for you? Are you praying for your neighbors? Oh, he cut the grass, two weeks over on my property, got one of my flowers. I'm going to sue him. <laughs> God help us. This man lives so good that. He his neighbors were Jews and they loved him and they wanted him to get whatever he asked for. Yeah. That's good preaching, son. Yeah. I'll see it first. <laughs> That's the word right here, yeah. That he is worthy, he was worthy that thou shouldst do this for him. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, his answer to the prayer, the Lord said, I'll come and heal him. A simple answer. A simple answer. I will come and heal him. Friend, Jesus wants to do good things for us. Yes. He wants to do good things for you. Yes. Not because you're worthy, but by his grace. But I hope your neighbor can see that you're worthy. Yes. His answer to prayer. The Lord said, I will come and heal him. The answer to a faithful prayer is always the same. I will. I will. God wants to do it. It's his desire to do it. He looks forward to doing it. That's what he sent his son Jesus down here to do. So we might draw closer to him. And he might be even better to us than he's doing. God wants to hear our prayers. He wants to answer our prayers. He says, I will come and heal him. You know, he used to be up on Mitchell Hill. Before Bethel sold that property back there on that ridge, back there in that clump of woods, it's two oak trees being sawed down. Come on. And it's about this far apart, about that far, and I nail my prayer request on the inside of this, and nail prayer request on the inside of that. Put one hand on this, put one, and get down on my knees and pray. And the Holy Ghost would show up. The leaves would rustle. And I prayed no my eyes, prayed might see something I wasn't supposed to see. Could have been a bear, I don't know, but this is. <laughs> but the fact is, God showed up. When prayer was made, I hate to sell that property, but that's what got the fellowship all built back here. But the fact is simply this God hears prayer and God do something if you mean it. And this old boy, he loved the Jews. Romans did not love Jews. Gentiles did not love Jews. And Jews did not love Gentiles. But here we got a love affair that God ordained. And they loved him. And he loved them. He built them a temple. 
And they wanted him to get what he asked for. Whatever he needs, that's what he gets. That's the way they looked at it. We need a place to pray. And the Bible also says, he loveth our nation. It's in the book. I read it to you. This centurion loved the Jewish nation. The Bible said this. Now listen. God told Abraham, said, the nation that blesses thee and thy seed, I'll bless. The nation that curses thee and thy seed, I'll curse. You better be good to them Jews. God's going to turn things around one of these days. They're going to be back on top again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You better be good to them. But this old boy was good to the Jews. He loved them. He built them a temple. And God gave him anything he wanted. Wouldn't I have God give you a blank check? Anything you want. In the name of Jesus. Sign God. You'll catch on in a minute. His storehouses ain't empty. He's not bankrupt. He can do it. He wants to do it. If we'll have the faith of a Gentile centurion Roman soldier. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a Jew to get it. Just believe, baby. Well, number two, uh, that was the, the, the centurion. Number two is the Lord's paradox. Uh-oh. The Lord's paradox. What's a paradox? Peter's like good grief. Grief ain't good. Good ain't grief. Good grief. That's a paradox. It's, it, from both ends, it don't work. It's kind of contradictory. A paradox. Jesus had a paradox. He wondered. He who was called wonderful. Remember, remember Christmas time? Wonder, good, wonderful counselor. Great. Uh, now, uh, Great Almighty God and everlasting and, uh, Prince of Peace and so forth. Almighty God and everlasting Father. A paradox. Jesus was the marvelous one, and yet he marveled. He is the wonderful one, and yet he wondered. The, the human part of Jesus wondered at their disbelief. And the divine part of Jesus was thrilled because he saw great faith. Your flesh cannot please the Lord. Like That's right. Your spirit can. Yes. He sees you as a human person that's weak and frail, and you don't do everything right. You're, you sin, you come short. But if you'll get in the spirit, he'll wash it all away. Yes. And make you a sick child of God. Now watch very quickly. The paradox. The one called one for wonder at their unbelief. He wondered at it. How can you not believe? Look at all I've done. Listen to what I've said. See who I am. Look around you. Listen. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears. What have I got to do to show you? Finally had to die and be resurrected. Yes. And then they still wouldn't believe. When it comes back, my friend, every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. Every head's going to bow. Yeah. There won't be no lie. Uh, run him down then, spitting on him. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. But the fact is, this very plainly. He wondered why they didn't believe. He wondered at their unbelief. We learned that Jesus admired this man's humility. He admired his charity and admired his faith of this centurion. All his disciples must have been kind of based when Jesus said, I have found no greater faith in all Israel than this. Thou said Peter, thou said James, thou said John. And Jesus would cry over the top of him and say, Out there is the greatest man I know. He got the greatest faith I've ever seen. What about me, Lord? I paid my tithes. <laughs> Jesus looked on top of all that. And saw a man had faith. He said, whatever you want, you got it, son. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, what, are we, what do you want me to do for you? I will come and heal your servant. God has the ability to do it. And he wants to do it. If we'll just have the faith, he'll do it. Yeah. Help me, Lord Jesus. Preach this message. It's hard and I know it. Yeah. All his disciples, they must have been kind of ashamed of themselves. Jesus looked past John and saw the centurion. Looked past Peter and saw that centurion. 
He didn't have no trouble looking past Thomas the Doubter and Judas the Betrayer. But Peter, James, and John, the three closest to him, the ones that took up on the mountain, the ones that took in the room and healed his little girl, his three closest ones, he took the stone slow first in the garden against him when he prayed, those three best disciples, he said, I found faith in this old centurion that beats all y'all. Oh, my soul. We need more faith. The centurion was put above the apostles in this statement. The next thing Jesus did after that, if you read it in Matthew, after that he got done healing his servant, I said he went down and healed Peter's mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, you see, Jesus looked over him and saw the centurion. Then he came back to Peter and healed his mother-in-law. So don't think you don't think you don't count. You count. There may be greater men, greater women, greater people than you, but God still cares about you. Yeah. Went down to Peter's house and healed his mother-in-law. And then Peter realized, Phew, I thought I'd get left out there for a minute. No. Jesus cares about you and you and you and me. Somebody said, well, so-and-so gets all the blessings. He didn't get them all. God's got plenty of them. You can some too if you want. Just get the faith. You get them. He said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Verse 10. So the paradox is something that's seemingly contradictory. By good grief. Why would Jesus wonder when he was the wonderful one? Why would he marvel when he was the marvelous one? He wondered and marveled at their faith. Why won't you believe? Why won't you come? Why? This Gentile centurion, this man that most of you don't care a thing about, he loved me more, he believes in me more, he wants more, he'll do more than all y'all put together. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm asking you this morning is, why don't you have as much sense as a Gentile centurion and come to Jesus, Lord, I ain't fit for nothing. You can't even come under my roof. I ain't fit to carry your shoes. You're good and I'm bad. But would you come and do this for me? Yes, sir. Would you save my wretched soul? Would you heal my servant? Lord, would you do something for me? I need help, and you're the only one who can give it to me. Yeah. Just your word. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to come into my house. Just, just speak the word. If you'll believe the word, you get everything God's got for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Right. Well, number three, the Lord's prophecy of the gathering in of the Gentiles. From the east and the west, he said here, from the east and the west, the Gentiles are going to come in to the kingdom. <laughs> I'll read the rest of that in just a minute, but watch this. Five, four different places in the Bible, five actually, Malachi 1, 11, Isaiah 5, 59, 19, Zechariah 8, 22, and Jeremiah 16, 19, all of them talk about gathering in the Gentiles. Yeah. Gathering in the Gentiles. Jesus looked down through the prophecy, down through the ages, he saw us Gentiles flocking into the house of God. Yes. He saw us flocking into the church. He saw us running headlong to get here. Jews, Gentiles, my friend, whosoever we are. But he saw the Gentiles coming in. Yes. And later on, there'll be an overflow of the Jews. You better get in before the stampede starts. Amen. Yes, it's going to be a revival in that while. And then Jews wake up. Praise God. But watch it very quickly. The centurion was like the wise men. You know, at Christmas time, the three magi or wise men or kings, whatever you want to call them. But these three wise men, they came from way over yonder in Babylon and, and over there in Persia and, and over there where Daniel was. And he was prophesied all this. Maybe that's how some of you knew something. But they followed that star that came to Jerusalem. That's the wrong place. Had to go to Bethlehem. He finally found him when he obeyed the voice of the Lord instead of following their idea and followed the star and found the baby. But back to this. They wanted to find Jesus. They wanted to be near Jesus. And this centurion, he knew there's only one hope for him. Only one hope for his soul. Only one hope for his servant. Only one hope. That was Jesus. Yeah. Even though he wasn't fit to come, for him to come under his house, he still wanted him. He still wanted him. When you find out you ain't worth nothing, Christ will come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So he wanted to be near Jesus and he got his wish. He got his wish. Watch it very quickly. In, the, in his foreknowledge, he saw the Gentiles 
rushing into a temple, rushing into the church, rushing into the house of God. Today, there's more Gentiles saved than there is Jews on planet Earth. More people who were rejected by the Jews have received Christ than all the Jews put together. But today's coming when the wild branches will cut off and the natural branches be grafted in again. He's going to turn to the Jews in that tribulation period, thank God. Yes. And the millennial reign of Christ. I'm telling you, 144,000 uh, priests and kings and so forth, then on in the millennium. None, nobody can number them. Amen. So be so many of them. But he saw the Gentiles, that's many of you, coming into the kingdom. That's what he said. He said, from the east and from the west, shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But, watch this, the children of the kingdom, that's the Jews, shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the ones who should have received Christ rejected him. And the ones who would have rejected him received him. A paradox. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I've said that. Jesus said to the go not to the lost sheep. To, go not to accept the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Just go to the Jews. Just go to the Jews. Just go to the Jews. But they turned him down to go to the whole, whole world. And on the day Jesus left, he said, go ye therefore unto all the world, make disciples, teach them. He said, go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the world. But he came first of all to the house of Israel. If they had believed, what a wonderful world it would have been. But they didn't. It's still a wonderful world for the Gentiles. But the Jews have got a veil over their face under a dark cloud of judgment because as a nation, they rejected the king of glory. Individual Jews are being saved every day. But as a nation... They do not believe Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They do not believe he's the Son of God. And they're in darkness until now, the Bible says. But Jesus said the day's coming when the Gentiles come in the house of God, from the east and the west. And the children of the kingdom, the ones of the covenant, the ones that had the law, the ones that had, the the ones, the ones that had the, the prophecies of the Old Testament, they will be cut off because of their unbelief. That Gentile Samaritan, that Gentile centurion rather, that Gentile centurion, that Roman soldier, he came in above all of them. He believed. They should have believed, but they didn't. And when it comes time of judgment day, ye who should believe and don't will go straight to the pits of hell. Come on, man. You had the opportunity. You heard the word of God. Jesus is the Son of God. You repent of your sins and believe on him. Thou shalt have everlasting life. I'm telling you, you need to, need to obey God's word today. The Jews were cast out in the outer darkness, weeping away with nice and teeth. While the Gentiles, who knew not God, they were heathens, came in. Because they believed. I'm glad Zeus ever will. I'm glad he knows a certain denomination, a certain race. I'm glad Jesus loves me just as much as he does you. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're going to make it. Or they were poor cows. Jesus doesn't come and die. If anybody dies lost on this side of the cross, y'all be in the bottom of the pit digging yeah. coals up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Chunking on brimstone. Nicing your teeth on the pits of hell. Yeah. Those Israelites who forfeited their right by unbelief and disobedience would find no place there at that marriage supper with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in outer darkness, weeping and gnashing teeth. The compassion of Christ. Jesus, was, he loves you. He loves you so much, he tells you about hell. I don't like anybody preaching about hell. You wouldn't like Jesus then. He preached more about hell than he did. Yeah. Yeah. He warned people about hell. Yes, sir. Because he loved them. I'm going to say this again. I thought I'd thank it last week. I'm not told the Bible this last week. Uh, a lady told me one day, she said, I wouldn't go to a church that believed in hell. I said, then you won't go to church. Come on. You go to a club. Yeah, yeah, a hall. Yeah, yeah, a lodge. Yeah. Or a center of some kind. <laughs> Jesus said on his rock, I'll build my church. Yeah, yeah. And the gates of hell. Yeah. Not really yeah. Hell might overcome a church don't preach in hell. No. Hell might overcome a church don't believe in hell. Right. Hell might overcome a church and change the Bible left hell out. But hell will never overcome the church that believes that Jesus Christ died to keep you Amen. out of hell. Amen. And there is hell. Amen. If you don't believe it, you'll find out. Just hold on. Oh, yes, 
The fact is very simply this. His, the prophecy that he made had a sorrow to it. The sorrow of the prophecy was that the heirs of the promises would not get into the kingdom because of unbelief. The compassion of Christ told about hell because he loves you. He warns us that outward privileges, now this is my last night here, outward privileges are not as important as inward faith. What does that mean, preacher? The Jews had all the privileges, but they rejected Christ. So they go to hell. Not every Jew, but the ones who rejected. You are in a Christian church with all the privileges. If you slide off a Bethel's pew and go to hell, you ought to. Free Bibles, free tracks, free dinner. Everything here is free. Nobody pays for nothing. We don't even charge you for your tithes. You give them because you love God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Old Brother Gooseman told a preacher friend of mine said, you can't pay tithes. Call me, I'll come get them. <laughs> Keep your old rotten money. What we want is your soul, yeah. Yeah. your interest, your zeal. We want you to have faith to call heaven down in the middle of this church and help us out. Yeah. Yeah. Free. Free. His life forfeit the right. He warns us that the outward privilege, you go, you're privileged in America. You know how privileged you are. Yeah. You can go to church without nobody shooting at you with a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Come on. You can go to church without arresting you for harassment or anything. You can go to the house of God and shout and wave your head and clap, jump up down, hoot and holler, go outside and run around the block, go to and preach Jesus on every corner. And they can't do one thing yeah. to you. That's right. In China, they hide. But in China, 15,000 a day get saved. A little persecution might not hurt us that much, you know? Right, right, right. But back to this. He warns us that the outward privileges of the Jews or of the Christian church will not save you. Suppose you get baptized. Wonderful. Won't save you. Suppose you do pay your tithes. Wonderful. Won't save you. Suppose you do sign the church and get, become a member. That won't save you. Suppose you do take the Lord's Supper, communion, drink that little bit of juice, eat that little bit of unleavened bread. That won't save you. I could baptize you in an all creek little tadpole through your social security number and you still go to <laughs> You must be born again. Hey, this centurion exercised faith that the Jews didn't have. And Jesus looked and said, I've not found faith like this. No, it's not in all this. No, where I'm not. You know, and our said, Peter, James, and John, boy, that kind of hit the head, buddy. Ordinances, sacraments, formalism. Practices will not save the soul. Last of all is this, the Lord's promise to the centurion. The centurion came looking for one thing. He was already rich. He could build a whole temple and not miss it. He could give gifts to the Jews and not miss them. He was a rich centurion. Well off. Had men under him. You go, he goes. You say, come, you come. You do, you do. Yet he was the boss. And he told Jesus, you're the boss in your reign. You speak to the disease, it goes. Speak to the sun, it shines. Speak to the wind, quits blowing. You speak and they obey. Angels obey. Oh my. Devils obey. Jesus was the boss in his area. And that centurion was the boss in his area. You're the boss in your area. Will you let Christ into it? Yeah. As thou hast believed, so be it done. That's what Jesus told that centurion. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you if you were here this morning and had the faith where you say, wherever I want that from you. If you had that kind of faith, you'd be too stupid to ask something stupid. You'd be smarter than to ask something crazy. Oh, I want you. One person said, I'm praying to hit the lottery. You ain't going to win. Don't play it. And that way you have the money you're supposed to lose. The house always wins. I used to run a gambling man. I know the house always wins. If it's only a nickel a pot, after so many pots, any more nickels you get out. But watch it here. The, the faith brought him. Nearer to God than unbelieving Israel. His faith brought him closer to God than all the Jews put together. If you don't get close to God, don't try to outdo him and outdo her. Just get close to God. Yeah. Yeah. Believe, have faith in God. Yeah. I'm going to put you right on the ladder. Right on the ladder. That Nazareth. Jesus one day went down to Nazareth where he was raised up at. Went down to Nazareth. And the Bible said, it's not his mother and his father with us. 
Is not his brothers and his sisters with us? Who is this man? They didn't believe him. They didn't believe in him. And the Bible says, Jesus said he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. The Nazarenes rejected him. They did not believe in him and they got nothing. He comes down to Capernaum unto the Gentiles. And this man gets anything he asks for. Well, watch it here very quickly. He marveled at the unbelief. In, in Mark 6, 6, it says Jesus marveled at the unbelief of the Nazarenes. Nazarenes. He marveled at it. He said, he said, I was raised here. I was born in Bethlehem, came here. I, I was raised here. I was a partner's son. I, you knew me all these years. You saw me. You heard me. You, you knew me. Why won't you believe in me? One fellow said this. said, if Jesus came down there today, people would believe in him. I said, no, he wouldn't. It won't kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Because our hearts are wicked and evil. Yeah. We'd be jealous of him. I said, for him, he's jealous. Right. Why did they kill Jesus? Jealous of him. Amen. The Nazarenes, they rejected him. The, the centurion did not. He did no mighty works out because of unbelief. He healed the centurion's servant because of the centurion's belief. Takes it better than privileges. Remember when we had a two-room house down front? Some of you remember. There was a two-room house. Had one curtain going out in the middle of the Two Sunday school guys. I'm, I'm not going to say that we got more power than we have today. I'm not going to say that. It seemed like we got more done with 20 people than we do with 150 I don't know how come that is. I don't understand it. But the church grew and grew and grew. And then two years we laid a foundation building this building. Yeah. Now we leveled off a little bit. What happened to us? Yeah. We've lost some of our faith in the almighty God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We've got good privileges. Oh, stalk cues, our condition, heaters. Oh, we got, we're privileged. We are privileged. But we need to get back to faith. The Jews were privileged but didn't have the faith. Right. Faith. Saves the Gentile, but privileges cannot save the Jew. Being a Baptist will never save you. Having communion will never save you. Having all kinds of privileges and good rights will never save you. We've got to have to come back to having some faith that will save us. And the last thing is this and the servant was healed in that self same hour. We need the faith to get something done right now. Amen. Yes. We need the faith to get something done right now. I believe there's people sitting here right now who need to get up, get out, get in order, and get right with God and let's right. get something done. Come yeah. on. Right now, today, you yeah. need to move. Yeah. We need the faith to move now. Yeah. Oh, next week, preacher, next week. No, now. Okay. One of these days, no. Here's what the Bible said. Now is accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Still not your neck. As it is the day of provocation. For if you do, you shall be suddenly cut off without remedy. One of these days be too late. You say, now is the time. If you're too late, say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Don't, don't slam in your face. Today is the day. Now is the time. And this centurion believed it right now. And he got it. Look at in that self same hour. I think about twelve o'clock. That self same hour. Self same hour. Right now. Now's the time. Say right now, Lord, I take it. Right now, I believe. Right now, I'm coming in. I'm, I'm I believe. Best day. Right now. The Gentile taught them how to do it. He taught them how to do it. Why don't you show us how to do it? While they're coming, I told the hypocrite one day. He was one of his hypocrites. And you know what he said? He said, too many hypocrites in the church for me. I said, you've been baptized? He said, yeah, then you're a hypocrite. Now I said this, I said, why don't you come down and show us how it's done? If everybody in here today is a hypocrite, the one in here that don't think is a hypocrite, show us how to do it. You'll catch that in a minute. Show the rest of us how to do it. Will you do that, please? If you're lost, come get saved. You're saved, let's get right. Come on, let's do it. Page 124 in a blue book. <laughs>